Welcome to this week's edition of New York Now. I'm Dan Clark. After months of waiting, we now know more about how many nursing home residents died from COVID-19 in New York. On Thursday morning, the state's death tally at nursing homes was at about 8,700. Stay with me, that's going to change. Then the state AG's office issued a scathing report saying the actual number might be twice as high. But that didn't sit well with the state health department. So they released a new count Thursday of how many nursing home residents died both at nursing homes and at the hospital. According to the data, another 3,800 nursing home residents died in hospitals than we knew. So with that, the new death toll for nursing homes is now at 12,700. And this is information that lawmakers have been asking about for months. Here's Senate Investigations Chair James Skoufis this week before it was released. I think it's an insult to the legislature that the Department of Health is stonewalling us. And we should not be waiting for a very basic set of answers, and not just on the deaths in hospital statistics, but we sent a letter with a whole host of questions uh, that has largely been ignored. And now some Republicans are calling on the state health commissioner to resign. Let's discuss with this week's panel. Karen DeWitt is from New York State Public Radio, and Daryl Camp is from Talk 1300. Thank you both for being here. Nice to be here. So Karen, let's talk a little bit more in depth about the report first. There were other parts of this report other than the undercount. It talked about conditions at nursing homes that may have contributed to the higher death rate than we knew about. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I feel like that part of the report got overshadowed because of the uh, the Cuomo administration stonewalling on the numbers for so long and driving everybody crazy that that became the big story. But if you look at the conditions at the nursing home that the AG investigators found, really, it reads like something out of the 1800s. It does. You know, they, they took patients who had COVID and put them with other patients. Some of them they treated with Tylenol. They continued to have communal dining. They didn't follow uh, PPE uh, protocols. And it just seemed like they, it was, I don't know if it was either ignorance, or I hate to say it, they didn't care, but they didn't do any of the things to protect a lot of the residents there. And while the AG doesn't say that it contributed to their deaths, it says, they say that it may have. And you just have to wonder, what was the Department of Health doing all these years that it came to this in the nursing homes, that they were so unprepared and really didn't didn't know any of the things they were supposed to be doing. It was just sad, more than anything, reading the report and seeing that these patients were put at risk because of low staffing levels at a lot of homes. There weren't enough staff for the number of patients. The staff didn't follow infection control protocols, apparently. And then one thing that really stuck out to me was that some of the staff were pressured to work even if they had symptoms or were diagnosed with the coronavirus, which obviously if PPE can only go so far, yeah. there's always that risk there that you could infect somebody. And I think you're exactly right. If we weren't so obsessed about the nursing home death count, I think that that would have been the bigger story. And I imagine for lawmakers, it probably will be the bigger story in the next few months. Maybe they'll do something legislatively. Uh, Daryl, I want to go to you. How are lawmakers responding to the report? Obviously, we have the death under count. We have the conditions at nursing homes. What are people saying? Well, I spoke to Democrats and Republicans yesterday on several levels of government. And what you would expect from Republicans is essentially what they said. They would like for Howard Zucker to resign. And the governor, they're not necessarily calling for him to resign universally. But a lot of them say, hey, he's been dishonest, so he's kind of complicit as well. Uh, John McDonnell actually had a very unique position on this. He said from the beginning that he thought the March 25th directive was something that should not have been done. But he says that we should be focusing on prevention now of further deaths as opposed to punishing people in power right now. So that's probably pragmatic. However, not holding people accountable long term sets a bad precedent, I think. Well, he's one of the few health care professionals in the legislature, too. Yes. So he actually knows something. His opinion about really matters kind of about stuff. these kinds of things. Uh, additionally, there's another issue, and that issue being the conditions that were created to sort of incentivize nursing homes to accept COVID positive people. She went into mm. detail about how there was a financial incentive and how some operators may have misinterpreted what the government had said. And they took it as we need to go out of our way to accept these people as opposed to not refusing them. I remember that back in the spring, there was a financial incentive where mm -hmm. they would receive more money if they accepted these patients. And that's it, something that maybe the legislature can look at. And if you're a for-profit nursing home, you know, you have 
fewer staff, more patients, you make more money. Mm -hmm. But exactly. you know, and maybe when things are going okay, that's all right. But it just shows. I mean, you know, like I said, you have to wonder what the Department of Health investigators have been doing all these years. Have they been looking at what's actually been going on at nursing homes and what might motivate them to look the other way? I mean, I think that's a bigger story that needs to be looked into, and I hope that I can do it, and certainly other reporters can do that as well. And the health commissioner came out with a statement later Thursday, a very long <laughs> statement, basically yes. saying, you know what, the AG's report is right about all of these horrible conditions at nursing homes, but also none of this is my fault. What did you think about that? Well, yeah, that, that was what I found very stunning. Like, how can it not be their fault? They're supposed to be regulating. Shouldn't they know what's going on? I mean, it was a pandemic and it was, you know, nothing that we've ever experienced, but certainly I just think it has to be looked at. There has to be a real and deep investigation looking at everything that happened. I, I, Go I ahead, feel he set up a bit of a straw man too in his response because he was arguing a point that the report and reporters didn't make. That point being the overall count of deaths. No one was saying the overall count of deaths was higher. We were saying where they died mm -hmm. was different, mm -hmm. being in the nursing homes as opposed to in the hospitals where nursing home residents were transferred out of their residences. I don't think he really responded in good faith because it seemed pretty clear to me that everyone understood we were talking about where people had died, not the overall death count. And I should say, we've been asking for this number for months, the number of people that died both in nursing homes and at the hospitals. And the health department has consistently said to people that it just wasn't available, that they weren't going to give it to us. And then suddenly on Thursday, the AG's report came out and they had it like that six hours later. You just wonder if they had just come clean in the spring and said, you know, look, you know, nobody knew what they were doing. It's a pandemic. Maybe this wasn't the best decision. This is how many people who who died in nursing homes. It wouldn't have become such a big issue. And frankly, now it's, you know, it's been national news and it may seem crass to talk about politics right now, but Governor Cuomo, he wrote a book on how he fixed COVID. He won, he won an Emmy. And um, this just looks really bad for him. It Governor Cuomo also said that it was a political hit from Republicans in the far right every time. Bernadette for weeks was on him about the nursing home deaths and numbers, the March 25th mm -hmm. issue, and he said it was political. Uh, Tish James is a Democrat, so is this still political? Exactly. Yeah, I know, and an ally of Cuomo, which mm -hmm. was pretty amazing. And she was very quiet about that. I mean, there was no leaks of this. All of a sudden, it just showed up. Mm -hmm. 10 yeah. in the morning on a Thursday. So I thought that was very interesting. So Karen, that, budget quiet. hearings started mm -hmm. this week from the legislature. We had the education budget hearing. You spoke this week with Bob Schneider from the New York State School Boards Association for the show. Give us some quick highlights and then we're going to play the interview. Well, school funding, a big, big deal. $15 billion uh, budget deficit. Governor Cuomo wants to use some funds earmarked for pandemic relief to make up for the state school aid. Um, Bob Schneider, among others, is not happy about that. 